Hey guys, Shipsonic123 aka John here. Welcome to episode number 10 of the West Ham Career Mode. Three games to you guys in today's episode as per usual. Uh, all of them coming in the Premier League, I believe. Uh, the first one here is away in Wales at the Liberty Stadium against Swansea City. So we come into this game against Swansea Hi here at the Liberty everybody. Stadium in Martin Swansea. Tyler, uh, hoping Alan to... You're hoping to continue today, our good start to the season match, which and maintain an our position in the top four with hopefully three points. So as you see, we face off against, well, that is Francesco Guidelin you just saw, even though he is no longer the Swansea manager, the last game as Swansea, he has been Lucas sacked Fabianski and replaced by Taylor the former Crowell USA coach Bob Bradley. But, um, I mean, they obviously Wayne haven't, Bradley, haven't the fixed that, position. and Francesco Guidelin still remains to be the man today. on the sideline as opposed to Bob Bradley. Well, by the way, that's how that was how Swansea lined up just there, and that's goal, how we line up today. Uh, we bring in a couple of lads, uh, and we're going to go with the one strike and stuff. Uh, anyway, uh, first into the game here will come as Leon Brisson uh, would spread the ball through towards Flander Urenti. His shot would be saved, but it would be turned in on the rebound by Guilty Sigurdsson as the Icelandic playmaker Sigurdsson would make it Swansea 1, West Ham United 0, as uh, the first sack of the game leads the first goal as the Spaniard Llorente has a shot saved by, Ad by his host Spaniard Adrian but it falls perfectly for Guilford Sigurdsson as he latches it into the back of the net with his left foot on the half volley as, uh, as he makes it 1-0 to the Swans. We would retaliate here as Gokan Tora uh, plays in Andre I. Andre a bear shot on goal but shoots wide of the post as he fails to equalise for West Ham against his former club Swansea. He sets through here, takes the shot but it goes well wide of the post in the end as it uh, as it remains 1-0 and it would be Swansea 1 West Ham 0 at half time into the second half then Andre Ayew would uh, would uh, go past his man here he would play in Manuel Lanzini and Manuel Lanzini with the uh, the deft ball roll with the right foot would make it Swansea 1 West Ham 1 as he uh, as the most uh, the most deft finish is is required to make it Swansea 1 West Ham 1 uh, it's just uh, a soft through pass by Andre Ayew uh, Manuel Lantini takes it in his stride and just rolls it past Lucas Fabianski with the right foot right into the corner. Uh, soft, precise and, and it ends up in the back of the net so that's what is important as we make it 1-1. Uh, and following that Swansea would come forward with Gilfie Sigurdsson playing the ball out wide towards Jefferson Montero. Uh, Montero finds Fernando Llorente and on the first time shot Fernando Llorente finds the top corner and makes it Swansea 2, West Ham 1. That was completely unexpected from the former Athletic Bilbao man as Fernando Llorente makes it 2-1 to the Swans as he just, the ball's played into him, he, does, he doesn't even have to take a touch, he just, he just hits it perfectly first time with the right foot, that's a fantastic technique and in the end the game would finish Swansea 2 West Ham 1. So disappointed to get lost there but all we can do is move on and then for the second game of today's episode we take on Leicester City at the King Power Stadium in the Premier League once again looking to bounce back from that result with a win and con to consolidate our place in the table as uh, as we take on Claudio Ranieri's side. So as we come into this game in the King Power Stadium we're looking for a better result, we're looking for uh, to make a statement following that game against uh, Swansea where we did unfortunately lose as we come up against Claudio Ranieri's Premier League champions here. And uh, you can see it would, no, it would never be an easy game, even if Leicester haven't been able to follow up their heroics of last season so far this season, as they sit in mid-table in real life, even lower than that, I think. But uh, in the game, we've got a lot of useful players like uh, Riyad Mahrez and uh, Musa up front will be tough to deal with in terms of pace and stuff. Anyway, and our lineup was, was the average, of course. Uh, Winston Reid still injured, so Lord White has a for him. And uh, yeah, so uh, let's get into this game against Leicester then. So for the first game, uh, first highlight of this game, Mark Noble plays in Manuel Lanzini. He he spins it round to Andre Ayew, and Andre Ayew with the finesse shot shoots low and past the post, so it will stay at one nil. As um, Andre Ayew, he's got a couple of goals for us playing as the main striker this season, but I think uh, he's been a bit inconsistent in all honesty, and there he. He shows his ability to be inconsistent right there. So uh, then Manuel, uh, Arthur Masuaku would play in Manuel Lanzini and using the same technique, using the like slight ball roll, this time on the left foot, he makes it lesser nil, West Ham 1. As Manuel Lanzini, the top goal scorer in the Premier League, makes it 1-0 to West Ham. Yes, you heard that right, Lanzini is the top scorer in the Premier League and 
normally in my career mode saves, I never have a, or at least last year and this year, I never have a an out and out goal scorer all the time. I tend to just have a, a lot of players that can, that contribute, and I almost always have the best defense in the league. But uh, Lanzini being the top score, being the top scorer in the league, really it gives me encouragement. It makes me know that uh, at least I have a a striker who I can rely on, even though he's not playing the striker. I've only had a couple of ever, uh, I've only ever had a couple of players playing in that position that I could rely on like that. Anyway, um, like Lukaku last year in my Everton series. Anyway, uh, Ahmed Musa is played in here and he would make it 1-1 to Leicester City as the Nigerian finishes past Adrian to make it 1-1 to the Premier League champions. 1-1 uh, equalised for the Premier League champions as uh, Wes Morgan, the captain, picks up the ball. He slides it through towards Musa and then um, and then he, he looks like he's almost falling over, but he, uh, but he finesses the ball into the bottom corner to make a 1-1. And uh, as our defense kind of has a bit poor there and trying to mark him. But anyway, uh, Dimitri Pyatt would make it 2-1 then following that, as we would um, retain the lead here, or get back the lead. As uh, Lanzini goes to shoot, he gets blocked off. It comes to Pyatt, and Pyatt on the first time shot, finishes into the, into the far corner to make it 2-1 to West Ham United, as we do retain our regain the lead here I should say uh, as you see it's a shot blocked by Christian Fuchs it comes to Payet though and with the right foot he drills it right into the top corner and uh, as he's almost taken down by the Leicester City man in the process of doing so so it is um, Leicester City 1 West Ham 2 as the goal for Dimitri Payet following that then Manuel Lanzini would uh, would try and put the nail in the coffin here his, uh, his pass would be would be blocked, but his uh, resulting shot would be saved by Romo Batila to keep it at 2-1. As uh, it's an excellent effort from Lanzini here on the le on the right foot, and uh, it uh, requires uh, palm away from Ron Robert Zeller to keep it uh, to keep it out of the net, as it would be Leicester City one West Ham two at half time. Then to the second half, Dimitri Payet would pick up the ball here. He would dr he would drive down the left hand side with the ball. Uh, he would eventually turn it side to his right foot. Give it into Manuel Lanzini. Lanzini would take a pass to Wes Morgan, shoot and score to make it Leicester City 1, West Ham 3, with a spectacular goal from Manuel Lanzini. That was absolutely unbelievable from Lanzini. Unbelievable technique, unbelievable goal in general as he makes it 3 1. He just uh, he just hops the ball up, goes past Wes Morgan. The instant he's gotten uh, an inch or two on Morgan, he swings out the right foot on the half volley right into the top corner, pass from Robert Zeller to make it 3-1, that's probably the best goal we've scored all season so far, if I'm going to be honest, you know, I never did a goal of the season thing with Everton last year, I might do it with Everton this year, or West Ham this year I should say, as it does, as the game just finished 3-1, I'm considering it at least, I'm considering doing it, and then you know, if you want me to do a goal of the season goal, slash goal of the series thing, because I actually intend on finishing this series, anyway, uh, you see, you see our monthly scouting update there, and uh, our youth scout monthly report, I should say, and our monthly scouting updates from Ghana, Portugal, and England. Yeah, I just uh, paused for a second to think where we were. As of course, we're the Portugal manager, and the reason I'm in Ghana is because I think I can get lots of good, strong players from there. And uh, obviously, playing in England, it's always happened in England. Anyway, uh, there's some player training here following that as we train uh, our two uh, our two players who are actually in the first team squad for youth team players, that's um, the Portuguese, our Scout Future star, Alvaro Estevez, one of the main reasons why we took the Portugal job, and Amo Daco, who is from Ghana, and uh, and following that, as we do into the month of January, I'll show you a, a, a squad report here, as I do tend to do, like to do a squad report at the start of every month, and this is a very important month, as we do go into the transfer window here. Let me guys know... Let me know in the comments, I should say, what player, what any improvements you want me to make to the squad. I'm quite happy with the squad as it is, but just a couple of players I'd like to refine in a way. And I have a couple of pre-contract uh, plans as well, as you see in one second. One of them is Paul George and Tep. Obviously, we have a good few wings on the side, but if you look at it, like Tura, who we do use a lot, is going to be going back to the Sikdas. And I think this guy, who if we could bring him for absolutely nothing, Paul George and Tepi, in terms of potentially he's probably the best player you could get this year. Along with this guy, Mattia De Chilio, obviously um, you have Arbeloa, who I think I might move on, as De Chilio can play on the left or on the right, so he can do both. He can kind of fill and be a nice utility player, and I suppose uh, in Tep would be a nice um, rotational winger.
as of course Tora at the end of the season will be going back to his parent club Besiktas. So for the third final game of this episode we take on Manchester United at the London Stadium in the Premier League as we hope to consolidate our place from top four with being two points out of Tottenham in fifth place. A point behind Watford and Manchester City sitting all the way down at eighth and and we're hoping to kind of West Ham United's lineup. I don't, I don't, I don't want to say build a gap. But, well, we kind of do want to do that, don't we? We want to Angelo make sure we want to establish ourselves as a top four team and continuing front. to win games and get results would be a, a pretty successful way of doing that. As you anyway, see our, our lineup there, as as in terms of Man United's lineup, you see that in one second as we take on uh, Mourinho's side, as you see Jose Mourinho there, and me as well. I chose to refrain me as the Anyway, this is the Man United lineup. Fairly standard. I mean, Bay and Smalling, which could be the next. It could be looking for the next village in Ferdinand. Only Pogba, only on the bench as well, as you saw there. So, you know, potentially bring him on. He could be a danger. So, the first option is this episode. Pedro Obiang will slide in. Andre Ayu and shall be saved by David De Gea as the uh, the, uh, the our striker Ayu once again proves his inconsistency and his inability to take his chances a lot of the time as he fails to find the net there or even really test David De Gea and then Edmilson Fernandes will play in Pedro Obiang and shall be saved by De Gea down low as it will go to a corner and then Man United would attack us here with Zlatan Ibrahimovic uh, cutting inside into his right foot, playing in Daily Blind. Daily Blind would turn, Daily Blind would shoot, and with three minutes to go before half time, Daily Blind would score with it, with the left foot shot. Powerful pass, Adrian, to make a West Ham nil. Manchester United won. Ibrahimovic waited until his opportunity, played in Blind. He cut inside, uh, is that North Fight, I believe it is? He cut, yes, it is. He cut inside North Fight, shot with the, no, it was incredible actually, shot with the left foot, pass Adrian, 1 0 to Man United. Following that, then Chica Cuyate would play in uh, Edemilson Fernandez. He would shoot with the right foot for the next shot to be saved by David De Gea and put behind for a corner as we try and press an equalizer here uh, just on the stroke of half time. But uh, we couldn't get one, and it would be West Ham nil, Man United one at half time. Into the second half, then Anthony Martial uh, would uh, play in Chris Molly. He would lose possession though, to Alvaro Arbaloa, and what a disaster here! Arbaloa picks up the ball. And the man who I was just talking about getting rid of again this season has scored and equalised for us against Manchester United here at the London Stadium. As he picks up on a poor, uh, poor control mainly from uh, Chris Smalling. As the defenders played in, he tries to clear it. It rebounds off Arbeloa. He takes he takes his chance and buries the ball into the bottom corner past David De Gea. And he, as he beats his fellow Spaniard in, um, in making it 1-1. And... Uh, Mourinho obviously disappointed. Uh, I would be disappointed too if Chris Smalling just tried to clear the ball and he ended up uh, just hitting it straight to an opposition uh, player. Not necessarily an attack because the are below was playing it right back. But uh, following that, then Smalling's Azza would play through Sofian Baguli. He would take the shot first time, but it was saved by David De Gea as uh, David De Gea keeps his side level here as the Algerian Baguli looking to uh, put us in front. And then Manchester United would try and get a winner here with Marcus Rashford in the 19th minute as he would powerfully shoot uh, what Adrian would save. And it would be West Ham 1, Manchester United 1 at full time. So then, uh, as you see here, uh, Edmilson Fernandes is injured for five days, nothing really major there. And Reese Oxford says he wants a pay, pay increase. I'm not sure if you would have saw that, actually. But we do offer him a contract extension to the one he already has. He's one of the best prospects of the club. I think he actually is the best prospect of the club, at a, with a potential of around 86. And also, we've got a transfer up here from Manuel Lanzini, as you see, 4th of January is the date on it, so we are into the tra January transfer window now. We just we reject all offers, just as a future offers for Lanzini, because he's really our star player at the minute, but um, Matai De Chilio said that uh, said that he rejected our contract offer because he loves living in Milan, uh, apparently. Well, Milan tends to be a more cultured area than East London, but... Regardless, we tried and offer him. A, we try and sweeten the deal with some more, uh, with the higher wages. But Paul George and Ted does accept his offer, so he will come into the club for free at the end of the season. Anyway, uh, Matai De Chilio uh, rejected his contract again as we try and increase his wages, trying uh, to try and convince the Italian to join us here at the London Stadium. 
and uh, Rieslock had also accepted his contract extension as we as we do extend his contract. And Adrian said he's not adamant about leaving the club just yet. So uh, in, that brings to an end today's episode, guys. Next up, we take on Peter Brent in the FA Cup and Palace and Middlesbrough in the Premier League. So I'll see you for that, and goodbye.